Uh, welcome back to the NHL best bets. Yesterday there were quite a few games, I think uh, 14 overall, and um, we had a few picks um, like we always do when there's uh, multiple games. And um, last night um, picks were a bit split up as um, we had a total of bet um, St. Louis um, against uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Um, there were already four goals in the first five minutes, so it wasn't um, too much um, excitement after the uh, free-flowing attacking with those teams that um, Vegas have struggled a bit in scoring and uh, St. Louis has struggled a bit in defending. So those trends didn't uh, change too much, except the Vegas uh, continued to score better than earlier games. Um, the result was um, after extra activities in overtime 5-4, uh, so underbet was not correct. But then in um, Columbus, Florida visited there, uh, basically dominated the game, except the uh, goalie Bob Rowski returned to the Columbus wasn't a great success because he uh, let first two shots um, to the goal and uh, Columbus uh, was leading 2-0, but uh, then after the extra time and um, shootout, uh, Florida ended up winning, I think deserved win, and our bet was correct. Um, how do you see, Tommy, these two games? Um, was it a good bet um, or was it something that you would uh, think again? Yeah, funny thing in the both games, actually, the first period, not very, uh, not very much as we expected in, uh, in Columbus. Uh, of course, the home team shot three times on goal in the first period, scoring two goals in the first two shots, like you said. So uh, that was going to be a pretty bad bet. But then uh, the justice was done in the end when uh, when a Florida came back to the game and uh, deservedly so um, took it to overtime and then in the um, in the shootout managed to win. So that was a good pick, especially with the uh, with the price we got for it, the great odds of. Uh, um, a lot of plus there. So I think uh, these sort of coin flips, when you get again uh, odds as we did, this is a, this is a really good bet. Um, then, of course, uh, in Vegas, um, we did not anticipate this sort of thing to happen, that uh, Robin Lehner in the goal of uh, Vegas allows uh, uh, three goals in six shots. Um, in the first period, San Luis finally ended up shooting um, eight times and scored three goals. So. Um, not very good uh, save percentage there for Robin Lehner. So maybe something to look into. Marc-Andre Fleury, I think, has played three games, uh, allowed 1.5 goals and um, save percentage more than 90% easily. And now Lehner quite a lot under it. So maybe there is uh, still something going on with the flower um, to go in the, uh, the goal in the future. Um, but yeah, now Vegas got the, uh, got the goals that they needed. Uh, San Luis still had a little bit trouble defending, of course. Um, when taking an early lead, it, it becomes a little bit difficult because Vegas is a sort of team that when they get the momentum, they're hard to stop. So uh, clear over there, so a bad pick. But um, I would definitely take a look at it again uh, another time when they play together because both have improvements to do in the defense. Both of the goaltenders are a lot better than we saw. So. Um, I might still go for the under with these odds in the future. Uh, there were a lot of um, other games that we discussed yesterday. Uh, some of these, like uh, for example, Washington um, against um, Islanders um, went as uh, simulations uh, predicted. Uh, and um, also Winnipeg um, continued their home game um, performance uh, improvements um, against Edmonton. Now with uh, quite free-flowing gear, the game there as well, and um, goalies were not uh, in the best uh, form either side, even though they had the first goalies, Helen Baka and Koskinen there. Um, which games um, popped up to you, and, um, and uh, how do you think um, these games can give information for the future rounds and future bets? Yeah, of course, a lot of high-scoring games and always always nice to see goals to be scored and uh, um, very high-octane matches everywhere. Um, 
I have to point out the, the Washington win against uh, New York Islanders. Like you mentioned, we had that for Washington, even if they were missing um, their, their top players. Very good. Good value bet there, plus 120 around what, what are the odds for Capitals. Uh, so again, Capitals is such a good team that they are able to win even without their uh, top performers for a short while. Of course, if they will be out for longer time, then at some point it will start to show and they're probably going to lose some games as well. Um, another one that we liked a lot was Toronto against Calgary in uh, in Saddle Dome again, where uh, Calgary has had some issues and Toronto took that win. We had uh, them as a uh, uh, plus 110 and uh, our simulations indicated 53% for them. So great value for uh, away underdogs as well in the in this case. But these are uh, high scoring games. Now it does seem to uh, go the way that Colorado Avalanche, for example, scored now seven goals. We had them clear winners against San Jose. Um, of course, not the, the best of opponents, but um, these teams that are um, heavily offensive, like Winnipeg, Edmonton, uh, Colorado, they seem to have started to find their, their offense and scoring a lot of goals now. Of course, also our simulation favorites, Philadelphia, uh, scored five goals now against Scott Wedgwood in uh, New Jersey, a game that we were pondering which uh, goaltenders will play because Mackenzie Blackwood's status with the COVID uh, system, the protocol is unknown. So uh, there was in the end Brian Elliott for Philadelphia and Scott Wedgwood for New Jersey and that turned the tables towards Philadelphia a little bit more than uh, we anticipated in the beginning. Yeah. Um, how do you see this um, amount of goals um, as um, it has been a bit, uh, let's say, two-way street here? There's uh, quite a bit uh, unders games like uh, LA, Minnesota 2-1, uh, Anaheim, uh, Arizona 1-0. Basically all these um, bottom predicted West Division teams haven't scored too much, but then, uh, like you said, uh, Colorado starts to score as um, predicted high numbers and some others. So will there be more overs now in uh, upcoming rounds uh, for the betters? Uh, that's a difficult question. Now when I look at the simulations and most of the games that have the line set up at 5.5 are those that are actually went under at least now on the last round. So I think the, the odds makers and of course our simulations then are also uh, quite correct in setting the line. So if it's 5.5, uh, it is expected to be very low scoring game, um, except for the one that we pick, of course. But otherwise, it seems to go this way. Um, and then you have these games that have 6.5, like uh, Edmonton um, and Winnipeg, which goes over then like in a, in a mighty way. So. I think the odds makers are pretty well in line. There is a big, big difference between the uh, between the games. So that's something to pay attention to. If there is a, a team that is very high scoring against a team that is very low scoring, I think it's more likely to go over uh, because now the offensive engines are getting going and uh, it's not that easy to break down the, the offense anymore as it was maybe in the first five, six games of the season. So I would say that there will be more overs in these lopsided games than there has been before. But then these defensive teams will keep it close, like, uh, let's say, Minnesota, Arizona, uh, Anaheim, Los Angeles, teams that don't have that good uh, offensive uh, talent. They will probably try to still uh, break the game and not, not score goals. And um, their, their idea of the game is not allowing the opponents to score, not so much to score themselves. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's good to um, note that uh, these um, lopsided games, um, especially with the high-scoring teams, uh, will get more overs, and it's then important to review a little bit the uh, line if it's still 5.5 or if it has inflated to 6 or even 6.5 in these games. Um, we have two games um, tonight, um, and uh, we have picked... Um, both of them here. First of all, we continue the ride with Vancouver. They beat Ottawa two nights ago, and um, that was quite clear. 
clear game. Um, odds are not so good like um, two days ago, but still there's a value in, in Vancouver in this game. Second game is back-to-back -back game between um, Nashville and Chicago. Last night Nashville won after overtime at 3-2. to two. They overshoot uh, Chicago quite a bit, but it was very tight game. Chicago was leading in uh, second period. Um, this time uh, there is a, quite a good value for Chicago with uh, plus 168 odds and uh, Nashville uh, track record is not so great in home back-to-back -back games. So when their overall win percentage in these games is um, almost 60 back-to-back -back games, it's only 50. So uh, if they won one, maybe they cannot uh, won the second in this time. And, and that's one of the reasoning for our bets. Of course, uh, everything is based on the simulations and uh, value out of those. Um, how do you see these games and um, do you think that there will be some value in totals uh, in either of these? Yeah, these are good big picks and there is a lot of value. Uh, Chicago 48.5% in our simulations, uh, odds indicate around 38% only, so uh, almost 10%. Uh, therefore, for the away underdog and great odds, um, in Vancouver then about 5%. Um, uh, value for for the Vancouver Canucks who beat Ottawa seven to one last time. Of course, in that game, maybe the numbers were not exactly uh, representing the game itself. But Vancouver is still a lot better team. Ottawa seems to be struggling, so good bet, good bet there. And uh, Chicago showed last night that they are able to to compete um, against Nashville, even kill. Um, Again, the goaltender situation uncertain, no confirmed goalkeepers in either of these games. Uh, very likely that Chicago will go with Kevin Langin and uh, Nashville has a choice between Pekkarin and Jose Saros. Not much uh, difference between those keepers. Langin, like, uh, like previously stated, has been playing pretty well, so could be uh, another advantage for Chicago. Um, and also Vancouver uh, likely to play Braden Holtby. Um, it was Thatcher Demko who played in the win 7-1, but probably going to use this rotation now when they have two great goaltenders to compete for the number one spot. And uh, Ottawa then doesn't really have a choice. It's going to be Matt Murray for <laughs> for sure. Um, for the over-unders, it's very, very even. Um, under and over, I think, a little bit leaning towards the under, um, even in Vancouver, where, uh, where last time they scored eight goals in simulations. Uh, the line is set at 6.5. I think you can get a lower line as well with decent odds, um, but it's about 50% under under six and a half goals. So um, possibly if the odds are better than, uh, than the evens, then under is a better choice than the over. And in Nashville and Chicago, the, the line is six and the uh, simulations indicated to be pretty much right there. Uh, 2.9 goals scored for Chicago and uh, 3.0 goals uh, scored by Nashville. So it's exactly at six, not a lot of value there. That's good to know. And um, I also agree that um, these uh, goalies um, like Lankin and uh, I think Saros, uh, they have maybe a bit uh, hotter stride than um, Subban and um, Rinne who played them um, last night. So. Um, it would be a good uh, game, and um, especially Nashville, uh, they haven't uh, scored too much. Um, they won first two games, uh, scored their three, three and a five goals, but then two, zero, two, and now last night three after overtime. So the um, team has uh, struggled a bit with uh, scoring. Uh, Chicago has played uh, maybe a bit lower level teams like in Detroit and made quite a few goals. So interesting game, good to watch. And uh, we um, trust on Lankinen to pull the win out of it. Yeah, we will. We uh, we like Finnish goalkeepers. I don't know why. <laughs> let's see how it goes and um, we'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, let's see.